Hello Sunshine and welcome back to my channel, Sunshine in My Code. My name is Sawahudimu Matlofeng and today we're going to be talking about the fourth industrial revolution. Every now and then tech buzzwords become very popular and the more popular they become, they just start getting used very loosely. But in today's video, we're actually going to be talking about a tech word uh, that's gaining some popularity but is still salvageable and that's the fourth industrial revolution. The term the fourth industrial revolution became popularized in 2016 by Klaus Schrupp who is the founder and chairman of the World Economic Forum in his book The Fourth Industrial Revolution. Charles Schrupp actually explains that there have been four industrial revolutions that have taken place in the past and we are currently in the middle of the fourth one. So what is an industrial revolution and what are the other three revolutions that have come by? Stay tuned to find out more. An industrial revolution is when new technologies and novel ways of perceiving the world trigger major changes in economic and social structures. An industrial revolution will perceive the way people engage with each other, communicate, get from A to B, and how businesses do their business, which causes major changes in society. The first industrial revolution took place in 1750s England with more people moving to factory work and abandoning hand handmade products and farming. This saw more factories become the center of people's lives and people's perception of the idea of work suddenly started changing. The world began to rely on steam power and mechanic tools. While steamships and railroads revolutionized how people get from A to B and what emerged as the new center of the community became factories. While the Industrial Revolution in England may have started in 1750s, South Africa only experienced its first Industrial Revolution in 1867 when large, mine, large diamond deposits were discovered in Kimberley. The revolution was also sparked a few years later when gold deposits were discovered in Witz Fossus Rand. The second industrial revolution, also known as the age of science and mass production, saw the first industrial revolution, but at a scientifically larger scale. Scientific philosophy started being incorporated into factories and how factories did things. The second industrial revolution is also what sparked amazing new inventions such as the first telephone, the first television, and the first automobile. It really did usher in the age of modern technology. For the second industrial revolution, the rest of the world may have started in the early 1900s, but South Africa started producing its first automated cars actually in the 1920s. The first television amidst political disagreements in the country actually was introduced in 1975 for white people and only in 1986 were black people allowed access to television. The third industrial revolution, also known as the digital age, started in the 1950s with personal computers and the internet. <laughs> Technologies that were previously analogous started becoming more digital. We saw digital phones, digital televisions, tablets, smartphones, and of course, robots. The digital era has completely disrupted the way businesses center their business model. Online communication, remote work, global companies that can be started within very little time. Social networks have drastically changed the way people communicate in the new modern era of instant communication. The, so the digital revolution has disrupted nearly every industry. But how does that reflect for South Africa? Well, results from a Pew Research actually revealed that only 50% of South Africans have access to smartphones, while 40% of the population is still using feature phones with limited access to the internet. And from an African scale, only 13.5 of Africans have access to the internet. And South Africa is one of the more privileged countries where over 50% of the population has access to the internet. This results in a lot of contrasting perceptions of what it means for South Africa to be a digital country. And last but most spectacular, the fourth industrial revolution. The fourth industrial re industrial revolution, which is characterized when the lines between what's real, what's virtual, what's digital, and what's biological starts becoming really blurry. We won't even know what's real or what's not anymore. This includes things like AI that can write its own books, self-driving cars that are aware of everything and the road and can actually make smart decisions about which routes to care to take. Smart homes that are aware of your parents' presence and can actually be catered specifically towards your needs 
factories, they don't even need human beings around anymore. And even more interesting, being able to print 3D bionic potty pods from the comfort of your own home. So, it seems that we won't really know what technology and what humanity is. And what does this mean for, well, people? Well, the fourth industrial revolution in an ideal state would mean that people simply won't have to do manual and annoying tasks. We can focus on more high-skill tasks and with so much automation, the idea is that no one will be poor anymore. But that promise kind of sounds familiar. With every technological buzzword or buzz trend that comes, there's a promise to somehow alleviate poverty through technology. But we've seen with literally every tech trend that that's not always as simple. The big question we mostly see is that people tend to confuse the digital revolution and the fourth industrial revolution, which basically sometimes it sounds like people are saying learning how to code means that you're a part of the fourth industrial revolution. It's not always the case. It is a great introduction into the third industrial revolution, which is a great step towards the fourth industrial revolution. And some people will argue that the fourth industrial revolution is actually just an extension of the third industrial revolution. So, so that South Africa already has a pretty big digital divide with people who have access to digital devices and people who don't. Only 50% of the population has access to the internet. And what this means that with new technologies that will require um, more money and better technology infrastructure and hardware, it means that, well, we're gonna see a third divide between people who have access to some of the best and latest technology in the world being able to get bionic arms, self-driving cars, and smart homes, and the rest of the other side of the population having access to things like tablets, smartphones, and laptops, and well, the third part of the country that will have access to very little technological devices, probably just feature phones. And that's simply what's going to happen is that there's even gonna be a wider gap or a different, a third class of technological separation between the digital device. Divide. I actually wonder if it will still be called the digital divide once it's got more than one divide inside of it. But yeah, and the third question that people always wonder is, is the fourth industrial revolution going to save Africa? On today's episode of Technology Still Won't Save Africa. Um, well, you know when blockchain was popular, everyone said blockchain was going to solve all of Africa's political issues and people were claiming that blockchain will solve uh, the issue of tyrants and centralized banking systems throughout Africa and everyone was very, very excited about blockchain and blockchain literally did nothing for Africa. Well, <sighs> take words and take buzzwords mean nothing until we as African people are actually able to come up with actual solutions for African problems. We often just adapt Western technologies that is very carefully designed, tested and implemented for Western problems and we think that applying it to African situations will automatically solve all of Africa's problems and time and time again we learn that it's not always the case. The truth of the matter is, it just creates more divisions of class between people who can afford, people who have reached to certain technologies and those who don't get left further and further behind. However, in the same case with the digital revolution, we may see that these things may not be as expensive. For instance, once smart homes become a thing, maybe cell phones will significantly become cheaper and more and more people will be able to afford access to the internet and access to smartphones. It's totally possible. In the same way that the digital revolution has significantly improved people's lives, we may see the fourth industrial revolution doing the same for others and we'll just have to take its pros and cons. And the thing about an industrial revolution is whether you like it or not, definitely gonna happen the small part of the population that can afford these devices afford this technology and afford a chance to jump on it are simply not going to stop because a certain part of the population can't afford to what do you do when someone uses the word 4IR incorrectly well first of all remember most people who use the word 4IR incorrectly are probably just mistaking it for the digital revolution which is still something that's still very relevant and very much happening in South Africa so they're not actually too far off they just missed it by just four and three it's not too bad and i also don't think it's really such a bad thing that people are misusing the word i think what really matters is that people 
are prioritizing digitalization and we're seeing um, high school kids learning how to code, which is incredibly amazing and a good foundational start. I love started coding in high school, so I'm very excited to see that more people will be taking it on. Of course, however, it's still important to address the issue that some schools don't have textbooks, some schools don't have, teachers don't have access to resources that would allow them to improve their education system. South Africa still has schools that have classes outside of, like classes under a tree, and I know it's hard to believe, but it actually still happens in this country. So while we prioritize making sure that people have access to tablets, maybe let's also take a moment to ask, do the students who are still learning in dangerous schools or the students who are learning under trees, are they being prioritized? Are they also now not a problem because it's cool to just say for IR maybe? Let's just prioritize the things that really matter i think from a business perspective you know the business sector will definitely move on with 4ir regardless of what happens but in government it's the government's responsibility to ensure that everyone has access to somewhat just basic human rights before trying to be flashy and that's just my two cents on the fourth industrial revolution so if you see someone misusing the term direct into my youtube video and while you're here please subscribe to sunshine in my code and click on the notification so you can be a part of the notification squad and thank you for